Good morning, it's Sunday the 3rd of April, the first Sunday in April, and uh, we'd like to thank you again for listening to our short message from God's Word, and uh, we trust that uh, God will bless you. Uh, this morning uh, I'm going to uh, read a, a hymn to you this morning, which was upon my mind, and the portion of scripture which was upon the hymn writer's mind. Uh, it's uh, obvious the this chapter, Isaiah 55, was upon the mind of the hymn writer when he penned these words. This is the words of the hymn. And it's 185. It says, Ho ye thirsty, Jesus calls you. Jesus came to give. Wine and milk of free salvation come to him and live. Verse 2 says, Wherefore do ye spend your treasure where there is no bread? Only by the living Saviour dying souls are fed. He's the only one who can meet your need. None can be too vile for Jesus. You know, that takes in every everyone. No matter how vile they are, the, uh, the Apostle Paul he called himself the chief of sinners. And if the Lord Jesus Christ saved the Apostle Paul, he can save everyone and anyone. And none can be too vile for Jesus. None can be, be, be too pure. By his blood, our peace and pardon, mercy is ever sure. Oh, his tender love and pity. You know, he reaches out to you today in love and compassion. And still, to think he's lengthened out the day of grace. Still he calls today. Never one to him who cometh. Shall be cast away. That's the little verse I got the night I get saved. Him that cometh to me, I will no ways cast out. And that night I get saved. I knew I came as I was, weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place. And you know, he has made me glad. Never one to him who cometh shall be cast away. From all sin he came to save us. Satan slaves to free. To his royal feast he bids us, sinner, taste and see. And the hymn writer, no doubt, he was thinking about this chapter we're about to read, Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55 verse 1 says, Ho, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Ye come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat the, ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall uh, live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, they shall call a nation that they knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your thoughts, than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We'll just end the reading there and we know with God's blessing. There are just a few wee thoughts I want to leave with you this morning. And in the first verse we are reminded there, uh, come ye. And then in verse 3 we're reminded to you, hear ye. 
And then whenever we go to uh, verse 6, we are reminded there, seek ye. And then at the end of verse 6, uh, call ye. And these are just a few a few thoughts I want to, uh, for a few moments, want to speak on. I trust that God will bless you this morning. And uh, uh, we will just say a few things with the help of God. Now this invitation uh, in Isaiah chapter 55 is an invitation that God extends to everyone. You know that means that there's no one excluded. It says come everyone. And you know the offer to you is to come and buy without money and without price. <clears throat> something that is free. Something that is without cost. But it cost God. And what a cost. For you and I to come into this blessing. Uh, it cost God his son. And it's God's free offer of salvation. Which was provided through the Lord Jesus Christ. And John 3.16 reminds us for God to love the world that he gave. His only begotten son. It cost God his son. It cost his son his life. And the Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life voluntarily upon that cruel, cruel cross of shame. And the invitation to you today is it's a free salvation which God offers to you. Come ye that are thirsty and buy. And I wonder what are you thirsting after today? I wonder, dear friend, what is your priority in life? You might say, say to me, salvation and what you're speaking about, that's not for me, Sam. That's boring. Uh, I love and enjoy uh, uh, the pleasures of this world. But you know, dear friend, there's pleasures, yes, but they're only for a season. What God wants to give you today is something that's going to last forever. Something that's going to satisfy. Something that's going to quench your thirst. And God provided. As provision, uh, this is a free gift which is offered to you today. Without money. And without price. It cost God his son. You know over in Revelation 22 we're reminded there how that the spirit and the and the bride say, "Come and let him that is a thirst, come and let and let him is him that is hungry, come and buy, uh, or come." And it's an offer which is free. It's free unto you all. And how do you come into the good of this? You just receive it. If you were thirsty and I give you a a, a drink of water, and you sat it down and looked at it, you wouldn't get the good of it. Well, it'd be no good to you. It's only whenever you taste and see, as we see further down this chapter, to eat and be blessed. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5, we remind it, come you and Isaiah 53 and 5, hear ye, and clean your ear, or listen. This is a promise that God says, your soul shall live. You know, dear friend, there's, there's a time coming, dear friend, when Every one of us, in a hundred years or less from now, will all be gone. And your soul will be in one of two places. In heaven or in hell. And I ask you today, not only to come, but to listen. To incline your ear. And hear. And if you do, you're going to be blessed, because your soul shall live. You know, to get God's salvation, we need to exercise faith. It's by faith alone, by, by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. How do you get faith? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And he says that, not only does he say that you're here and you shall live, and I will make an, ever, an everlasting promise with you. And you know, what God says he will do, and he does what he says. And he also, the Lord Jesus Christ says in John chapter 6, John's Gospel chapter 6 verse 35, I am uh, the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. 
He promises you today his salvation. If you listen to God's word, and not only listen, but respond to what you're listening to. Verse 6 of this chapter, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You know, what does it mean, dear friend, to seek? It means to, to, to go after, to call upon, to pursue. And you know, dear friend, it's only you that can do I can't do this for you. If you want God's salvation, you know, God has provided it for you and all you have to do is just take God at his word and receive it. Seek the Lord. Seek him when? Seek him now. Uh, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. While he may be found. He'll not always be found. Verse 6, then that chapter, Call ye. Why are you to call? While he is near. You know, the time to call is now. I'm reminded this in Second Corinthians 6 and 2. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And Romans 6 and 13 also reminds us, Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved or have God's salvation. You know, what does salvation mean? It just simply means deliverance, safety and preservation. Deliverance from going down to hell. To be saved means to be safe from coming wrath and judgment. And also to be preserved from going down to hell in the lake of fire. And when a person gets saved, you know, uh, we we'll think of his past, he's saved from the guilt and the penalty of the sin of his past. Secondly, he's being saved from the habit and dominion of sin presently. And in future, he will be taken away from the very presence of sin to a place where sin will never, ever enter. I wonder, dear friend, are you going to accept Christ as your Saviour today? Are you going to accept this invitation? This invitation to come, to listen to what God has got to say, to seek the Lord while he may be found, to call upon him. And remember the words of the little hymn, whoever shall call, there is pardon for all and the love that give Jesus to die. Trust him today. Thank you for listening. May God bless you.